Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday, October 10th and it is almost 5.30. I wanted to come out and try and do a couple orders to meet my weekly goal and uh, call it a night because I'm pretty wiped out. Uh, earlier today I went to a pumpkin patch with my family and my nephews can just, you know, kids just really wear you out. Uh, <laughs> I had a good time and I am near my hot spots and we will see what this Sunday night is like. We had rain earlier in the day and now it's beautiful, it's sunny again. And you know, at least in my area, the last couple weeks of October when it's warm, everybody wants to be out, everyone's eating outside. So I'm just not sure that the apps are going to be busy this evening, uh, especially because, you know, a lot of people don't work tomorrow, there's no school tomorrow, so we will see what the Sunday night looks like. All right guys, so as soon as I shut the camera off, I got in a Uber Eats order. 9.87, going 1.1 miles. Uh, walked into Chipotle, it was ready. We are gonna go, we are three minutes away from this drop off, love it. Being at the pumpkin patch today got me thinking about all things Halloween, scary movies, costumes, and so on. So many homes in my neighborhood go all out for Halloween. And while in the car with my nephews, they got so excited to see some of these over-the-top decorations. One home had clowns as their theme, and my six-year-old nephew gets so excited to see Pennywise, since that's one of his favorite wrestlers to play on Xbox. <laughs> I love knowing he isn't afraid of these clowns, like I was. I had a few nightmares where I woke up screaming as a kid because of Pennywise. The original Pennywise, though who I think looks much scarier than this new version. But what my nephew did have a bad dream about was the scary Elmo character in that Among Us game. Now, I don't know anything about that game, but why they turn Elmo into this terrorizing character is beyond me. But it made me remember that Tickle Me Elmo craze back in the mid 90s where parents were going crazy trying to buy one, fighting in the toy aisles. I'm not sure if kids will want Elmo in their bed nowadays since Elmo is now portrayed as scary in this Among Us game. <laughs> but it turns out something similar to that Tickle Me Elmo craze was all part of the inspiration for the writer of Child's Play, Don Mancini. His father worked in marketing all his life and Don remembered the craze of the Cabbage Patch dolls in the 80s where they just never stayed in stock and invoked some fighting and chaos among adults trying to get one for their kids. Based on this, he wanted to write a dark satire about how marketing could affect children, and these early drafts eventually became Child's Play. The main character Chucky's looks were loosely inspired by the doll My Buddy, and they wanted to call him Buddy in the movie, but couldn't because of licensing with Hasbro, uh, who created the My Buddy doll. The aspects of Chucky coming alive and some of his horrific traits were inspired by an episode of The Twilight Zone called Living Doll and by a made-for-TV trilogy called Trilogy of Terror, which came out in 1975. In the Twilight Zone episode called Living Doll, a doll called Talky Tina comes to life. In this case, the wind-up doll is gifted to a young girl named Christy, and Talky Tina takes a hatred to Christy's stepfather, Eric. The doll starts telling Eric that she wants to kill him and that she hates him. So, of course, uh, Eric goes on to try to kill the doll in numerous ways, none of which are successful. He eventually places the doll in a trash can with the lid weighed down by bricks. Later that night, Eric goes to investigate strange noises in the house, only to trip and fall over Talky Tina, who is lying on the steps. Eric succumbs to his injuries, and Talky Tina wins. <laughs> in a trilogy of terror, which features three segments, one of which is called Amelia, a woman buys a wooden doll which contains the spirit of a Zuni hunter named He Who Kills. The doll eventually comes to life and attacks Amelia numerous times until she thinks she kills him by trapping him in an oven and burning him alive. Turns out the black smoke from the oven breathed in by Amelia made his spirit come alive in her. Finding out the sources of inspiration for Child's Play and all the Chucky films brought me down a rabbit hole in which a widely spread rumor about Robert the Doll being the inspiration for Chucky was proved to be false. The story of Robert the Doll is actually very interesting and I will leave an article link below if you want to find out more. Robert the Doll lives on in the East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida if you ever wanted to pay him a visit. 
Okay, I just dropped that off, and as soon as I unpaused DoorDash, I got a 750 offer going 7.3 miles, so that's a decline. And it was one of those, it's a double pickup going to one house, so they ordered from a restaurant called Mr. Brost, and DoorDash probably said, you can order from 7-Eleven and, and save on fees. And it looks like that's what this customer did, but to go to two different places and it's not even a dollar per mile, nah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna drive back to my strip of restaurants and we'll see what we get. But the first order is keeping me hopeful, so here we go. Okay, DoorDash coming through with another one. It's 6.75 for 2.4 miles from a place called City Barbecue. I always say it's the best smelling pickup. It always smells so delicious. So I'm gonna go get that. Uh, I'd say 90% of the time, the orders are always ready. And um, could this be a hidden tip with the 675? They have a lot of stuff. So chances of the tip being higher could be good. Their subtotal is 47.34. Have you guys been seeing subtotals again? I know that that went away and then it came back and then it went away and now it looks like it's back, at least for me. So I'm at least happy to see it again and um, on our way to that pickup. Another popular scary movie franchise, Scream, which originally came out in December 1996, was inspired by the unfortunate events of the Gainesville Ripper, Danny Rowling. Screenwriter Kevin Williamson was home alone one day when he was watching a new segment about the Gainesville Ripper. While watching, he noticed an open window in his living room and realized how easy it would be for someone to come in and harm him. Rather than work himself up and get spooked over the open window, he got to work on a script that would eventually become Scream. Okay, at City Barbecue, I did have to wait about 10 minutes for the order, but they were very responsive to me. They kept me updated, so I really appreciate that from the restaurant staff, that was nice of them. And uh, they literally took, they were waiting on the uh, deep fried pickles, and I literally watched the guy uh, from the fryer into the container, and then the guy put it straight into the bag. So they are piping hot. I, I love pickles, it smells so good in this car, I, I swear. I should get like a, a barbecue uh, car freshener. <laughs> Just kidding. But you guys a fan of barbecue? Do you like deep fried pickles? Because mm -mm -mm, my mouth is watering. But it's in the back seat out of reach, so don't worry, I'm not gonna eat any. Uh, I am three minutes away from this drop off. Nice and simple, still keeping my fingers crossed for a hidden tip. Maybe, we'll see. While the only similarities between the murderers in Scream, known as Ghostface, and Danny Rowling, known as the Gainesville Ripper, were that of the weapon of choice, which was a knife, and the way that they pose their victims for shock value, the biggest difference is what I find most chilling. In Scream, Ghostface had motives to kill as he was seeking revenge, and the murders were not at random. The Gainesville Ripper Danny Rowling claimed he committed the murders just for superstar status, for notoriety, as all his attacks were random. All right, guys, there was a 50 cent hidden tip on there. Uh, I believe the tip ended up being 450, and the total ended up being 725. But you know what? I'll take it. Better than 675, right? <laughs> Whatever. All right, we're still gonna get hit with some bad stuff here. I've got a $4 offer for 5.7 miles from Popeyes. That is a no. Okay guys, if you can't tell, it's quite a bit later. Um, I did go home to eat uh, and I just picked up order number three from Poke Burrito. I'm gonna go drop that off. I think it's only about two miles away. All right, order number three dropped off. I think there was another hidden tip because as soon as I hit complete and I saw the payout screen, another order came through, 775 for 2.2 miles. I'm gonna take that. Uh, this feels nice to be busy again. Um, I missed it. So once, because I'm in DoorDash, I don't think I could go back to my earnings. Let me see. Yeah, it's not gonna go back to my earnings on my current Dash. 
So I'll be able to see if there's a hidden tip on order number three, but I am off to pick up order number four. And I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry that this lighting is so bad. Uh, I need to figure out how to film at night. So here we go to order number four. In August 1990, he ended the lives of five college students, and it wasn't until 2006, the year that he was executed, that he made a handwritten confession that he killed a family of three in their home in Louisiana in 1989, which had been an unsolved mystery for 17 years until he confessed. In May 1990, he even attempted to shoot his father after they got into an argument. Fortunately, his father survived, but lost the use of one of his eyes and one of his ears for the rest of his life. Rowling was at large for these crimes until he was arrested in September 1990, following a botched attempt at burglary in Florida. My deepest condolences go out to the families and loved ones of all the victims of Rowling's senseless crimes. Okay, can you see me? <laughs> Order number four is dropped off, and I guess there's a dollar peak pay happening now. So it was a two seventy-five base pay, dollar peak pay, five dollar tip. Um, so it ended up being a dollar more than the original offer. All right, so I just turned Uber back on now because I haven't had a chance to because DoorDash, I guess, has been on fire tonight. So. I did the four orders. I don't even know where I'm at right now because this is all happening so fast. I'm not used to it, um, but I'm happy about it. So I'm gonna kind of see my totals and see if I have made my goal for the week. I'll be right back. All right, I'm sorry for the bad lighting and the weird glares and everything going on. I did four orders and I think my total was 33.63, which averaged about $8.40 an order. That is much better than I've been seeing in my market lately, so I guess people are enjoying the holiday Sunday with no work tomorrow and they're ordering in. I did one Uber Eats order, three DoorDash, and there was a hidden tip on all three DoorDash offers, which was interesting. Plus, the last two had a dollar peak pay on it, which was nice, so I made my goal for the week. I actually only needed to make $27 tonight and I made the 33, so I'm happy. Uh, some of you may think a $27 goal is pathetic, but if you've been watching my videos, you see my market sometimes to make $27 is like pulling teeth. So I'm glad I made it so fast in four offers. I probably would have made it a lot quicker if I didn't stop home to eat dinner, but that city barbecue smell got me very, very hungry, so I went home to eat. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with how tonight went, and if you guys made it this far in the video, I thank you so much for watching. Please take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.